In a bid to kickstart a virtuous cycle of investment, the union budget has sought to step up public investment by raising capital expenditure by 35.4%. But will high capex spend have the desired impact on recovery and growth? Keki Mistri, Vice Chairman and CEO, HDFC Limited, talks about the state of the Indian economy and how long before the recovery picks up pace. Mr. Mistri, great to have you with us. Uh, you really have a pulse on economic activity and, you know, with the recent announcements of a huge CAPE expense planned by the government, uh, do you anticipate that this will have the desired impact on recovery and growth? I would certainly think so. I mentioned in a few programs prior to the budget that, in my view, the focus on the budget should really be on growth because growth will lead to an opening up of the economy, it will lead to more jobs getting created, and it will lead to uh, generally more income in the hands of people. And ultimately, it will it, kickstart economic growth, because jobs will result in, uh, growth will result, or capex will result in more manufacturing, it will result in more uh, spending on infrastructure, it will result in more jobs getting created, and as jobs get created, people will have income, they will spend that money as demand increases in the economy, manufacturers, producers of services will have to provide more services, produce more, which means more people get employed. So it's a basically a multiplier effect that, that sets in. So I think it is absolutely the right thing to do, because it will kickstart everything else in the economy. Mr. Mistry, what's the kind of gestation period you see before all of this uh, kicks in uh, and we start to see results? A couple of quarters down the line, is that what you're anticipating? And uh, which parts of industry, which sectors stand to benefit? I mean, I would say during the course of the year. Now, whether it is going to be in quarter one or quarter two or quarter three, that really depends on what the actual government program is in terms of how the expenditure is going to take place. But the fact that the government will spend so much money will mean that private sector will also step in in its own way and start spending money, start, you know, creating, uh, you know, building capex, spending money on capital expenditure, uh, buying goods, buying, buying uh, fixed assets and stuff like that. So it will create an all round effect with both government funding and private sector funding. coming in. And okay. one of the... One of the things that everyone has been talking of for a very long time now is that private sector capex cycle in India has been slow. And I think the best way to ignite that, the best way to get that going is for the government to also start spending money where automatically private sector will spend along with it. Do you see the recovery as uh, continuing to be uneven? Uh, you know, there has been a lot of criticism, of course, that it's a K-shaped recovery. And given uh, the focus uh, on infra, on some of those pockets uh, of the economy, will we continue to see an uneven recovery? No, I think it will be broad-based across the board, but it's not going to be that everything is going to start from day one. To my mind, the bigger focus to start will be on infrastructure because infrastructure and housing is what creates a lot of jobs. On housing, I thought, if I recall right, 48,000 crores was allocated, and for infrastructure, probably be a lot more building roads and, and things like that. So that will be the starting point, but that will, as I said earlier, lead to more jobs, and if jobs get created, demand increases in the economy, then it will kickstart all other sectors in the economy. Would you have liked to see uh, more incentives for housing, Mr. Mistry? You know, it, it is always the job of industry to ask for things and it yeah. is for the government <laughs> to decide what to give and what, what not to give. But I okay. truly believe, I truly believe that a lot has been done for the housing sector. We've created that buzz, we created that impetus which was required for housing to take off. And we we were in that 2017 to 2019 period, I would say 2017 to almost mid to end of 2020, we were seeing the demand really coming in only from tier two and tier three towns and not really from the metros. Now what has changed in the last year and a half or so mm -hmm. is that the demand apart from coming from tier two, tier three towns is also coming equally strong or even more stronger from the metros. Okay. So it's, it's basically a broad-based uh, growth that we are seeing. And you see this demand for uh, the affordable segment because, of course, in the middle we had that entire phase where it was primarily driven by luxury. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Because a see... lot of the, sorry, because yeah. a lot of the jobs which will get created because of this mm -hmm. infra spending, this capex spending, will help the lower middle income uh, uh, people also, which will help the affordable housing. Now, the RBI in its recent policy has been incredibly dovish, but uh, when we do see the onset of rate hikes, how do you see that impacting demand? 
Well, my personal view was that in the February policy, our RBI would not change the rates. Yeah. There was a small chance that they could look at the reverse repo rate increase, certainly not a, a, a repo rate increase, and they had not done that. My sense is in the April policy, they could perhaps look at the reverse repo rate hike and then maybe in June look at repo hike or whatever else. But that is purely a function of where the data spans out, what kind of inflation numbers we report over the next three, four months, what happens to oil prices, what happens on this whole Russia, Ukraine uh, issue. So there are so many macro factors today which are beyond the uh, you know, we, we can't really envisage or know what's happening. But I think it's very important to understand that RBI historically has been fairly accurate in their projection of inflation. And if RBI believes that the inflation level uh, going forward would be around 4.5%, I'm very happy to go there. And to my mind, at 4.5%, you don't need to do any aggressive, uh, you know, increase in interest rates. People compare India with US. I think we are comparing apples and oranges. US is a completely different market. Inflation in US is 7.5%. Inflation in US was always very low, whereas mm. inflation in India historically was always a lot higher than US. And this is perhaps the first time in my whole career over, over so many years where I'm seeing that inflation in the US is higher than in India. So naturally, U.S. will have to have a different policy, a much more aggressive policy in terms of raising rates. Mr. Mistry, then projections for growth, realistic or conservative, according to you? I would say that uh, these projections are broadly in line. However, economic activity has picked up very substantially. We've seen, we see that on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, for example, if you look at the traffic on the streets of big cities, whether it's Mumbai or Delhi or Bangalore or wherever, it's, it's, much, it's, it's, it's now more than what it used to be in pre-COVID times. So economic, so obviously if there is so much traffic, it means economic activity is back to normal. Hotels are running full. Restaurants are running full. People are going out and shopping. Shops are running full. So all, all, all of this will lead to more and more economic activity. And if the economic activity continues to rise, then yes, these projections that the government can, has made could very well uh, you know, end up being a lot more. And would you say that the structural story, uh, the domestic story, the India story uh, remains intact? I, I think India's strength is really its uh, demographics. Mm. As you know, two thirds of our population is below 35 years of age, yeah. which yeah. means there is such a large part of our population which has not even been exposed to a whole host of financial products. Which exactly. people will be which they will be exposed to as they grow older and older, and therefore. Honestly, in my, my opinion, the scope for growth in India in the coming, I won't say years, I would say even decades, is extremely, yeah. extremely strong. Mr. Mistry, thanks so much for joining us here on Business Today. Great to have you with us.